sun may be shining, but it's late October here in Washington, so that's not going to last for long. I'd like to get this shed in a good place before winter seriously hits, so the race for house wrap is on. The main structure is more or less done at this point, and I think it would be helpful to have a floor to stand on, so time to install some joist hangers. A little bit trickier than I imagined, but I did get better with some practice. Before we get to floor joists though, just a few quick cleanup items. I don't really want any plants bringing moisture up into the floor system, and I'm also sure I'll have to crawl around down here at some point, so I did a quick cleanup with a rake and then laid down some 6mm plastic for a vapor barrier and to stop the plants. I'm going to come back later and stake this down properly, or at least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, now time for floor joists. This part was pretty straightforward, honestly. Just measure, make a bunch of cuts, and then drop in the joists. And by drop in, I actually mean pound in. This was the only real oddity here. The little off cut that I used as a template to install the hangers was from a big box store, and these joists were from a local supplier. I think it's probably safe to chalk that up to moisture differences between the two boards. The total depth of the shed is 8 feet, and the posts are sitting inside that dimension. So that means I have to take some notches out of this flooring material. This stuff is specifically 2332nds Tongue and Groove OSB. There are some shockingly expensive subfloor panels out there, but luckily I was able to pick these up for about 25 bucks a sheet. The total length of the shed is supposed to be 16 feet exactly four sheets of 4 by 8 plywood. As careful as I thought I was with the string layout, somehow this got messed up a little bit, so I had to bust out my fancy woodworking track saw and trim a little off some sheets. With a little bit more notching, some coaxing, and a bit of adjustment, everything ended up falling into place. More or less. All right. Well, the gaps in the middle all look good, but, but, look at this. Flush-ish on that corner, and then it just stair steps all the way down. Man, how to tell if your structure is not square. This is... Pretty shameful, honestly. Lessons learned, hopefully. Whew, lessons learned indeed. And this one is about those two middle posts once again. Specifically, they are a little bit off axis or not coplanar with each other, so they're kind of like that. And when I laid down that first flooring sheet, that meant it was off kilter or not square to the rest of the structure. So when I laid down the subsequent sheets, that butted up against it, I had to slide them a little bit to get them sort of roughly into place, which created that stair-stepping effect. So the lesson that I've learned here is that layout at the beginning stages of the project is super, super important, and I will not be skimping on that on my next project. In an effort to salvage at least some of my dignity, I wanted the screw holes to at least be in a nice, even grid pattern. So I had Anne help me snap some chalk lines and got to screwing down. I'm using 2 inch deck screws for this because I had a giant box laying around. And as a side note, I think this might actually be the first time I've used deck screws for something close to their intended purpose. This might be another item that's a little bit overkill for a shed like this, but I wanted to add some Z flashing around the bottom of the rim joist. The shed is pretty tall, and I don't think the bottom is going to be completely protected by the overhang all the time, so I like the idea of having some kind of drip edge here for when rain does make its way down there. Figuring out how to cut this stuff to make a nice clean overlap was quite the jigsaw puzzle actually, and no, this is not the first one, this is actually the fourth one, and yeah, we don't need to talk about the other three, they're fine. Just trust me. Figuring out how to hammer in these very short nails without smashing my fingers took a little bit, but I eventually got it. 
These holes will later get covered up by a house wrap and some flashing tape. With the galvanized steel skirt in place, the only thing left to do before house wrap was to finish up some framing. The girt placement here is a little bit odd being so close to the ones above them, but that's because I decided to move the siding down in my plan a little bit to completely cover the rim joist. Doing that meant the tops of my siding panels were now landing a little bit lower and I needed some nailing surface to attach them. I also decided to use a 2x6 for my quote door header here, but luckily I had this piece left over from the garden bed build. That's why this and the next few pieces are randomly pressure treated. I ripped this 2x6 down to 4.5 inches to give me some material to pack out the door frame. This material flushes up the door jam with the rest of the girts and gives me some solid material to attach door hinges to later. It was a little bit warped, so I just flushed it up with a clamp before attaching it fully. And of course this is leftover material, so it wasn't quite long enough to reach the top, so I cut another little block to fill in that gap. And keep in mind this is not really a structural header like you'd find in a stick frame build, so it doesn't really need to be supported as such. Same process for the other side, and I'm really liking this folding ruler for doing things like measuring gaps like this. I'm going to salvage this old window from the existing garage addition here at the back, and I wanted to take some additional measurements before I made the new frame for it. Some light demolition was required. The post frame window framing process is really cool. You just make this box that is the size of the rough opening of your window, and then you can just throw it up on the wall wherever you want. No pre-planning required. You just level off the bottom, plumb up the sides, and screw it into the girts. Quick correction here before someone repeats my mistake. The inside bottom of the window frame here is actually supposed to be flush with the top of the girt. Luckily, I realized this quickly and fixed my mistake. This might be a super obvious tip, but just in case it's not, I found it super helpful to just tack in nails where I need girts to be, so they can just rest in the proper position while I nail them off. You can also bend them up or down to reposition things slightly if needed. Finishing off this window frame is as simple as adding some vertical reinforcements to the inside, trimming out any girts that might be in the way, and then packing out the perimeter so you have a nice flush surface to install your window. For the final bit of framing, I just needed some girts that would run along the upper inside edge of the roof to provide some nailing surface for siding later on. Nothing fancy here, just a couple of angled cuts on the side pieces that were easily scribed and then cut with a circular saw. With the framing finally all complete, it's time for some house wrap. Yes, this might be a little bit overkill for a shed, but if you're sensing a theme here, I'm trying to take the moisture mitigation strategy seriously for this thing. I figure it's worth a little bit of extra time and money now to have this basically be maintenance and worry-free in the future. These rolls come in two lengths, a 3 foot and a 9 foot, and in hindsight, the 9 footer probably would have been a little bit easier. The girt spacing is two feet on center, so a three foot roll is a little bit awkward. I know the whole world likes to use staples to attach this stuff, but I actually opted for cap nails here instead. I'm not sure when I'll get the chance to install siding, so this stuff could be here for a while, and I don't want it blowing off if it gets windy. Since Anne did help me out here, I figured I'd do the nice thing and let her out at the end. And there you have it, a fairly waterproof shed. The one part I didn't film was going back and putting some flashing tape between the house wrap and that Z flashing all the way around the rim joist. But that's pretty much it for this one. On the next one, we'll install the door, the window, and some siding and trim. So if you wanna see that, you know what to do. Subscribe. Oh, and like this one. Like this one if you liked it. All right, see you in the next one. Thank you.